I am the Craft Dad. It's Warbler time! I've been waiting for a while to finally open this up and test the Warbler. I've never used Warbler before, and so uh, this will be a new experience for me, but I look forward to working with it and finding out what it can do. As you can see here, I bought three of the large sheets of Warbler. These things are huge! I cut out a small piece, and for those of you that don't know, Warbler is a thermal plastic that has wood shavings in it, or sawdust. I'm using my heat gun set about 500 uh, Fahrenheit. This is so I don't uh, cook the Warbler too fast. This gives me time to slowly warm it up to a temperature that I can work with. If you're not careful, you will burn your fingers. As you can see here, I'm using a tool to help hold down the little piece of Warbler because it flies everywhere if it's not held down. Once I've heated it up to a temperature that makes it malleable, I then press it onto the foam and I'm able to start shaping it. One of the great things with Warbler is that you can reheat it as needed. This makes Warbler great as you're working on projects where you don't think it's just right and you want to tweak it a bit, you know, add a little here, take away a little there, shift, you know, something the way it looks. As you can see here, I've placed it over one of the test gems from one of my other videos. I wanted to see how well it could cover the gem and how well I could get the uh, the, the base to lay flat at the, at the bottom of the gem. As you can see here, I'm heated it up by pressing it in. I'm using a uh, clay tools, which actually had come in very handy in helping manipulate and uh, smooth out the warbler. Um, as I've added an edge. As you can see here, I wanted to see how sharp of an edge I can actually get with warbler. You can get a really sharp edge. And if you accidentally make the edge too sharp, because, you know, we get overzealous, you can always heat it up and push the edge back a little more. I've reheated the warbler again, and now I'm using my craft knife, and I'm cutting a ring around the warbler. Now, while doing this, I cut it as close to the base as I could, and while using the clay tools, I flattened the warbler around the base to see just how flat of a surface I could get. And, well, it came out pretty nice. The warbler meshed in really well with itself. In this close-up picture, you can see the, the texture of the warbler. It's kind of like a, a thing of sandpaper, finely grit sandpaper is the texture, and that's due to the sawdust and stuff that's within the warbler. So then I wanted to figure out, you know, well, what else can I do with the warbler? I took some warbler scraps and heated it up, rolled it out like Play-Doh into a little tiny roll, and then I, uh, once I got was satisfied with the uh, thickness, you know, and it's deceiving. I thought, well, okay, this is really thin, so this is going to look, you know, really thin on the gem. And when I put it around the gem, it actually looked really thick. So, as you can see here from the angle, you know, it, it looks like the gem is encrusted. It's like being kept in place by some type of a fixture. So I reheated up the warbler because the great thing is you can reheat it and reshape it if you don't like it. So I thought, okay, well maybe, what if I try to make it look like the warbler was little tiny teeth holding on to the gem? And so I heated it up and I used the sculpting tool that I got for the, uh, the clay uh, tool set that I picked up, which I recommend you guys should get if you're working with warbler. And I just started in printing the, uh, the warbler and, and uh, thinning it out in some areas and I ended up doing a, uh, you know, just pressing against it and kind of changed the shape of it. I could have uh, worked with this more and, and made it look more like a little tiny uh, metal teeth or whatever holding onto the gem. You know, it's all up to you. So next I thought, why not try to imprint into the warbler? So I heated it up and I started imprinting. And as you can see here, the line is staying within the warbler. Now, the issue with this is, is you're thinning the warbler in that spot. So it could potentially become a weak spot within your warbler. While conducting my warbler testing, I used my high-speed warbler cooling apparatus so that I could uh, work with the warbler more easily. Now, I don't do this when I'm working with the actual uh, bigger projects because it's just not that feasible. Since I'm utilizing gems in my creations, I wanted to see how this gem lit up with the warble on it. And turns out the warble is actually transparent if you make it thin enough. 
which could be a, a, a useful application later on, but for now, I don't need it. Now, as part of the sword that I'm working on, I was trying to figure out if I was going to do LEDs to light up the three gems in the middle or shoot an LED across the surface of the sword and not put any gems at all. But to test that, I needed to see if the LED would actually go through all three gems and illuminate them. So I set up a quick test thing here. I put hot glue in between them and I uh, got my uh, LED tester, which has become uh, very, very handy. I uh, grabbed one of my smaller LEDs. I butted it up right against the hot glue that I was using and I illuminated it. What I found out is that the LED will illuminate the first gem and it kind of illuminates the second one. It looks better here in the picture than it does by the naked eye. And so what I've determined is that I don't want to put gems in the middle because it just won't let the light through on its own. Alrighty, now for the live demonstration. So again, my heat gun is set to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm heating up the warbler here. As you can see, I'm only spending a couple of seconds over the warbler. I've heated it up a little. And now, as you can see, the hard warbler is now like putty. Uh, it is hot, which is why I quickly touch it and let go of it. Uh, slowly start rolling it out. You see how easily it becomes malleable. Rolling it out thin. I haven't seen how thin I can actually roll it out yet. But uh, as you can see, you can roll it out and kind of stretch it as you're rolling and it's uh, it's pretty fascinating stuff again warbla is a thermal plastic with uh, wood uh, dust uh, inside of it retains heat really good I'm going to heat it up some more here thank you for watching this video I hope you liked it uh, if you like my videos uh, please subscribe like and share I have other uh, videos in the uh, channel, so please check them out. Uh, thank you very much.